Okay. Hi. Um, my name is Dara Grish. I'm from 56K Cloud. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of this company. Uh, we don't do dial-up internet to the cloud, <laughs> uh, hence the name. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy to be Learn Our Connect. Uh, was asked to present two or three use cases, like customer projects we've been working on, uh, where we've uh, done uh, quite a bit of work on building on top of like ARM system ready and the the whole you know uh, embedded system edge systems. So we're a company that works on old kind of legacy application migration in kind of some regulate, regular, highly regulated environments, so like financial services, for example. And then the other end of the spectrum, we're also doing you know, cloud, connected cloud applications on devices. Uh, so where you'd have uh, a device that would be connected to the cloud or have some sort of online presence. It, it, it doesn't just run on its own. Uh, and so this is a basically a story of a 2G projects. And that was actually the last slide <laughs> of a previous talk, uh, which was basically, our experience, you would it would feel like you have to you would migrate a banking application, uh, actually a pretty, quite secure one, before you'd get something running on an, an edge device in a secure way. So the whole uh, whole what I wanted to share today is basically anywhere aware of cloud native space, like yeah. So so the tooling there. This is about like us. We we have like two different areas of the company. One working on cloud classical cloud applications from like say application migrations. Uh, to also application development on edge devices. And actually like stepping back and looking at it and saying, okay, why is this easy and why is that hard? And so this is what I wanna uh, share with you today. So um, you know, my talk kind of covers on two, two specific elements. And one here on the, on the left side you see is uh, like Parsec. So if you've heard of Parsec, is this idea of abstracting the implementation of various different secure elements and actually making it more accessible for developers to, to develop secure applications. I'm not talking about like TAs, trusted applications in like Opti or anything. It's more like layering on top of that. And then the other end of the spectrum, then, you know, we're sitting there with the customers. So, you know, someone who could be developing, let's say it's connected projector, for example, uh, or if you could manage your, your connected car, uh, which has multiple, de multiple devices and it's like a platform on wheels in a sense but it has some sort of online experience. It's connected to something in the cloud. And then behind all of that, you know, a lot of these solutions, as you know, are built on top of ARM technologies with you know, their ODM partners and system integrators. And then end customers, the end user kind of community is looking for some sort of solution on that. And then us as an integrator, that's what we're, we do as 56K Cloud, is we're bringing all these building blocks together and trying to first build a decent developer experience and then at the same time, actually come to some sort of maintainable solution with a customer. And let me give you an example of what those customers look like. So our ideal kind of customer profile, so that's what ICP means, uh, and what it typically looks like is they are mostly come from like a microcontroller background where they you know, have, a, let's say, a device, like I'll show you a use case of, let's say, securing a hotel, like this hotel actually, for example, where the conference is being hosted. Um, where a lot of the development would have been in a kind of closed ecosystem on a microcontroller. I started in the 8051 days, and you had, you know, Keel Microvision and everything. It was, you know, a very solid environment. You could go through the data, sh the data sheet of 8051 within 60, 70 pages, and you pretty much you knew exactly what to do. So it doesn't change. It's a consistent platform. And then the other thing is they're very vertical focused. A lot of customers, like one where we've worked in the OT space and energy, systems, the, the requirements there are clear, and it takes years to develop a system, especially if it's like fire panels or safety, uh, critical stuff. And then in the other end of the spectrum, when we're looking at stuff that is more on the disruptive layer, so like your mobile phone, so imagine a banking app, and all this kind of crypto, now that you can you know exchange Bitcoin with fiat currencies, it has a, like say, the consumer industry behind it, and as we know, like with the mobile industry, that has to move very fast. And when the, to, uh, the cloud tools, the tooling are better, you have this kind of sliding rule here. So the, either the building blocks are more mature on the, on the right side, or, and in, or you can achieve a solution by you know, layering on top of existing systems. And essentially what I want to show in the next few slides is you know, why is this becoming now more of a challenge and, 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 and you know, why wasn't it a problem in the past? And a lot of it's to do with that. A lot of systems now that we're building are very much connected, connected solutions. 
so a lot of moving parts. Um, ODMs provide, for example, you know, usually very buggy uh, images. It's usually just to get a device, out, you know, out out of the factory onto as an evaluation kit, you know, to to prove one or two use cases and to have some sort of easy go to market. And that's but then trying to take that uh, to an end user and build a solution on top. Most of the time, on the integrator side, on our side, it's very ugly, and it looks a lot uglier when you are on the one end of the spectrum working with, let's say, the hyperscalers, you know, migrating business applications, for example, or applications that have nothing to do with devices. It's it, uh, there is a far more mature developer environment. So this is essentially kind of what I, I'm showing here: is you have you know a lot of building blocks, you know, without too much glue. To stick them together, so you know, system really focused on like Ubuntu, Fedora, and Debian, and getting kind of vanilla images that just work. There's a out of box experience to a certain extent. There's a little bit more f flexibility there, um, but it, again, as a little of like you could be risk of getting locked out because you get siloed with a certain build, certain version. And then on the other end of the spectrum, of course, we can buy more you know, end solutions like Eurotech builds on top of uh, Cura, which is an open source IoT platform. And it can be a little bit of a lock-in. And then people in the middle are creating some tooling, like Foundries, Mender, and Secure Labs. So let me look at some use cases. And then I'll come back again uh, to, the, to the example. So this was a, <coughs> um, so uh, most of you are probably staying in a hotel. And you probably uh, you know, got this key card. Or you could get the key card over the mobile phone. And if you imagine, you know, that's an online experience because you booked a hotel, for example, over your phone or over your laptop, and then a few weeks later or a few months later, you actually go and check in. So there's a, it has to be some sort of interface between when you booked it, getting checked in the guest experience, to actually uh, now you know securely accessing your room. This is a use case we're working with one of the top three uh, vendors in you know lodging solutions, building access control, and. Uh, their business hasn't changed in decades. I mean, how often do you change a door? So the use case is pretty clear, but how people consume their service has changed. And you, so what, I, what I'm showing here is like just kind of two worlds uh, in the environment. Oh, I thought I killed this. Yeah. So, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, that just lost track. So yeah, there's a so because it's all about door access and everything, there's a high security requirement behind it, naturally enough. Um, but we, you know, part of their offering is like applications in the cloud, and the other part is applications on on, on devices. So this is kind of what the, what the proof of concept looks like. So on the left side here, you have an edge device. Uh, this is a new component we're introducing, uh, and what we've done is carved out the application. This is a AWS project. And we're slowly building it as a, puff, uh, as a public reference. Um, so the name is fake. Um, the components are actually different mixed vendors. They do actually work with mixed vendors. Um, but, on the, but the most interesting thing here is this device. And this is a project we're doing with, it's built on a solid run device. It's using IMX8. And the intention there is that it's a secure, uh, secure device. So there's actually OPT running on it. You have a trust application then exposed into this tool called Parsec. And then Parsec is enabling that the communication and, and root of trust back to the cloud um, is fused to the device. And then further on from that, then the application, because it is about you know, generating secure keys to open your door, even there might be mobile keys on a device, the second you know, part of the application is that, OK, uh, how can we also enable that uh, you know, secure element to actually be part of the application? And so, there's, so it's not just securing the device and securing the device, the platform the device is developed on, but also the software that's in it. And so this is, um, this is one project where the migration of the application in the cloud has been quite a smooth process. But building and splitting that application it, so the secure side of the system runs reliable on the device, is not, it, the development has not been so balanced. Let's call it that. Uh, here's another one. This is an energy uh, company. Uh, they have a gateways, so if you imagine, uh, so at home you have smart a meter maybe, you might have a smart meter. So this is not on the smart meter side. This is actually on the, uh, what, what's it on? So it's, if you imagine subsystems, so if you, some of you probably have solar panels at home and you're bringing energy maybe into the grid. One of the challenges that has been 
for energy grid providers is that how do I manage that demand? So demand side, so the idea is that the energy is coming back from people's homes, and this is a gateway device that uh, they needed to implement to gather the energy coming from the substations, and we had a use case with them where they needed to be able to augment applications in these substations so that when you have like you know Tesla's kind of charging network or another kind of you know EV charging network coming in, they needed to be able to build business applications on the edge because they need to have kind of how do we say it's not, it's not like real time building on mobile phones or telcos. It's a little less real time, but when you need to measure what energy is coming back into your substation, the grid controllers have to manage that. And so this was a, a use case where there was a high, let's say, security expectation because it's naturally an OT environment. Um, but this, but the, the challenge there was this device costs really nothing. It's like 40 or $50 because th the numbers are huge. I mean, they usually have like 2 million controllers in just one country, and Switzerland is not a big country, to give you an example. The, and now you have the, the ch other challenge where the software development behind that is re reflected on the cost of the device. And when you want to reduce the cost of the device down a lot, you need to work very much on the software side. Um, if you take an industry like the mobile phones, of course, that makes sense because it's a huge device count and it's quite aggressive. Uh, not so much when the business workflow behind winning one of these projects is a public tender kind of process. So that's where it's a little bit more challenging. Uh, let me just, I need to kill the teams. Sorry. Just bear with me a moment. The only way to kill teams is actually crash it. Okay, hopefully that works. <laughs> All right. Um, that's another use case. Same thing. These devices are usually in the field for seven to 12 years. They get resold. This is a uh, kind of a, a, a scanning. So when you're building, I say, a building like this, you need to do some quantity surveying. You have to do some precision measurement. Uh, the challenge with this is that the device count is really, really high. So that's fine. It makes sense to invest a lot in the software. But the industry they come from is precision measurement and control. And the software behind that is so you invest more on the sensor side, but then to augment more value out of the sensor, you need to, again, invest uh, a lot on the, on the software side. This is an example where a customer, they are kind of locked out. Um, so there's a few different vendors there, so you, to try not to identify it. But they're, they're building on Windows CE. And I remember, I remember one of the first projects, one of the first po jobs I got was to actually do something on TV set-top boxes, Windows and CE. And you already felt like the, the, you know, it was already in the graveyard at that point. And then you have devices out there, and what the problem was, it was not built on an open source platform. So this vendor got locked out. And so that's the other end of the argument as well, is having tools that a lot of the, your stack is open source. Otherwise, you end up with something like this, where you can't augment more value on this quite an expensive device. It can be up to 40,000, actually, US dollars, when it's uh, calibrated. And you, and you hit a development roadblock, because suddenly one of your vendors just decided, oh, uh, we don't going to support this anymore, and by the way, we don't have the code. You know, so that's an example. Don't need to get into the details. So, just to step back on the on the on the challenges, and um, I tried to summarize them here. And a lot of these companies they try to integrate on it on their own, and what ends up happening is, uh, you know, they go into one or two kind of let's say proof of concept projects, and then. They come back and they realize, you know, the out-of-box experience from the development kit was pretty okay. Um, and then the expectations, you know, that they don't see any need to further invest in it. And usually what ends up happening is it has some quick wins, but then to actually build something that you can deliver to your ODM, here's a factory image. This we're going to start to augment, you know, a life cycle on top of that. It starts to get kind of challenging uh, because the because the investment is being first, like the vendor is focused on, you know, bringing the price point of the device down, you know, less memory, or you need single core or dual core, but the software is still evolving, you know. You know so usually the, the discussion with the ODM and the, and the discussion with the software engineers on the, on the customer side or like on the integrator side like us um, is evolving at a different rate. And this is where 
I kind of say the mapping between, let's say, the software bill of materials and the actual bill of materials of the hardware don't match. And what ends up happening is they, they map the cost, like I mentioned it earlier, with the, the software. But I find that when you have a device, let's say you want to bring a device from $150 down to 80, you probably have 30, 40,000 words of software engineering to make that work. But in order to make, justify that software engineering, you need to be in, let's say, the thousand kind of device count uh, for them to get it. Um, a second challenge there is, you know, once the, the hardware is ordered, you know, you're kind of left on your own. Because on the software side, um, the ODM would have given, let's say, a statement to work where there would be just one line, secure Linux image, Debian and Yocto. And this one liner, Cost, can, can cost the customer a lot because who's ordering the hardware necessarily doesn't realize the, the, the kind of software risks they're involved in. And so that kind of goes back to my, 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 my main point is that the, 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 the tooling, the ecosystem behind it is very fragmented. And if you look at the ecosystem and the kind of developer tooling out there to migrate, let's say, software-based applications, not on devices, like, like I mentioned, that banking application, you would, you, would, you would move further along the line with kind of even more junior engineers than you would with uh, building out a secure edge application. So I've kind of tried to summarize the challenges on both customers and the ODMs side of here. Here's another example where sometimes it does work, and this is actually a public reference from uh, Widemiller. They are small enough kind of ODM. They also sell direct end, end, cost, end customers. They're very strong on the, in Europe, they're very quite strong because they're a household brand. You know, you can buy a hammer that says Widemiller on it. It's, it's like Stanley. Um, but they also do a lot on the industrial control space. Now, if you look back around two, three years ago when there was a software uh, a challenge, well, no, there was a supply chain challenge with getting bill of materials and everything and getting kind of components in manufacturing, a lot of customers couldn't actually deliver machines. These guys are usually in industrial control machines and stuff. We placed the requirement for system ready actually at their end customer to say, look, you can go in and talk to two, three hardware vendors, and if and, and we'd be able to mig migrate their application, or that's the whole software stack, as long as we're giving a pretty decent level, low level. So this is, this is where it worked uh, quite nicely. And it meant that that customer can buy a wide miller PLC, they can buy CronTron PLC or another system ready uh, device, and about 70 to 90% of the software stack we could migrate over. And we had it like that. We had the same um, industrial machine running on their equipment and another system ready vendor, and talking to the same motors and everything. So, in this case, you know, these kind of standardization does work, um, but it needs to be the context of how it can work, it, it needs to be managed. So, so go back to the building blocks and kind of where in the stack that I'm, I'm trying to kind of put the challenge. So in our world, a lot, a lot of we're, we're working a lot on MPU, so Linux, operating systems, embedded Linux, uh, not microcontrollers. So this is kind of a generalized view of kind of what it would look like. So the orange stuff is usually what you're trying to buy. You know, from a, from if you're the end user buying from an ODM. And then you want to build on the blue end some tooling to manage your, your edge application, specifically if it's a connected application, because then that's what we were focusing on. And then you have your, say, IoT use cases on top. The orange stuff, the out-of-box experience from my, is this need, this, this, is the this is the hard part, especially the glue, to get the bootloader correct, to get the uh, right kind of vendor board, so you can maybe swap if you're doing, let's say, SMARC, for example, where you can have an 80-link device, you can have a event tech, and you could just switch the, the modules if you want. Then the operating system, it needs, you need to, be, even though you might marry on to, let's say, Yocto at some point or Ubuntu, it's still important to know that you can run two or three different distros on it, because you want to start maybe with Ubuntu, or like in this other project, we're starting with Debian, and that's because it's faster for now. And then later, when we get to a point where we've achieved what we need on the top, then we can go down and slim it out and modernize it with, uh, with say, a Yocto. And then on the tooling side, this is where there's a nice overlap with a lot of the cloud-native tools that have matured in the cloud world. So Docker, for example, is one good one. This is you know, why Parsec is another one where we've introduced that. 
because it brings those cloud native principles into it. And then in that specific project, usually this one we have AWS Greengrass. And this is bringing that kind of developer mindset and tooling on the device that has been evolved in the public cloud. Uh, and so that, this, but they still need to have some stitching down into the operating system stack. And so to some, some extent, System Ready uh, works on kind of solving that. But I think unless the end user community is, is, has, attaches a sense of liability, I don't think they will invest, you know? They need to invest, you know, bring it also forward on their side. And this is what I found in this kind of typical stack is missing. Because once you solve those two layers, the tooling and the system ready part, it makes it a lot easier to bring your use case, your application use case. And most of our customers, they want to know that they, it's out of, they have a large ask for out of the box. Uh, so that's the challenge. There's the Greengrass Parsec deployment, so that's just a more evolved drawing of, of, of the hotel use case. And then some of the next steps that I summarized, I, I, I feel you know, the, 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 a lot of the methodologies or a lot of the kind of mindset on, on, on the software that's on hardware devices and particularly edge devices, the open source mindset is a little bit missing. It's, there's a little bit of a thinking that it's somewhat a charity <laughs> and, you know, we're trying to do people a favor. So there's, there needs to be a better long-term kind of sustainable view on that. And you're not alone. I mean, the cloud world did have those issues five, six, maybe 10 years ago, and it finally matured. Uh, another one I think is very important is the last one, is, would, is a lot of developer tooling in the public cloud is all about creating this kind of critical mass that developers adopt something and then you have a paid service behind it. That is one reason, that kind of like puts a little bit of a, how do you say, it doesn't make it sustainable forever. But supporting individual contributors and, end, and in the end user community, that actually does help a lot. So yeah, this is a recap on the customer profile thing. Like I mentioned, this is my more elaborated statement on the thing. So CID is a customer identifiable data. If you wanted to secure that in the cloud, you go a lot more further uh, than you would with uh, securing it on, a, on, let's say, a system-ready device. So that's me. I'm from uh, Switzerland. I am originally grew up in Ireland. Uh, our company is based in two places, in the French-speaking region and the German-speaking region. And uh, we do a lot with uh, Amazon and ARM. And uh, we're also, two or three of us are part of the ARM ambassador program, which I recommend signing up to. But uh, that's it. Uh, if anyone has any questions, happy to answer them outside or, or if there's... Thanks. Good. <laughs>